Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning at verse 1, a story that many of us are familiar with. We're going to look at this story once again. When you get it, want to say amen? amen? The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of what? Bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Not just dry, but very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Amen. Again he said unto me, Prophesy Amen. upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter in you, into you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews upon you and will bring a flesh upon you and cover you with what? Skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there, but there was no breath in them. Then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come forth, come from the four winds of breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Verse 11, verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. Can these bones live? Ezekiel begins his account with these words, the hand of the Lord is upon me. You know, brothers and sisters, there's nothing so inspiring, so encouraging to know that whatever you're about to do, to know that God is making sure to his Holy Spirit as to remind you that my hands are upon you. In other words, I am with you. My power will accompany you. And so you are not alone. Can someone say amen? amen? Picture the scene for a moment. Ezekiel was carried off into the spirit and taken to an obscure valley. The promised land is a home to the lowest spot in the earth. Matter of fact, they say that it's, it's uh, 1,300 feet below sea level. And you thought we were low. Perhaps Ezekiel was taken in vision down to this valley, low, very low and very hot, it may have been, where Sodom and Gomorrah used to be. Everywhere on every side were dead man's bleached bones. The Bible says that they were very dry. This suggests hopelessness. Hopelessness. Have you ever felt hopeless before? Have you ever felt very dry spiritually? Amen. Have you ever felt that praying was not necessary? You ever felt like that, that coming to church was no longer interesting? I'm talking about dry bones, brothers and sisters. You ever felt that it was better to stay home and watch uh, days of our life or, or to watch uh, 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 the, the um, station of with lifetime? You ever felt that it would be the 
that is better to stay with what uh, LeBron James or, or some of your other favorite NBA players because it's more exciting than coming to church. I'm talking about dry roads. You ever felt, brothers and sisters, that it was a waste of time coming to church because whenever you come, the preacher was born. Why come, Lord? Can these bones live? In the Bible, of course, not properly buried was considered to be accursed by God. This image also has a lot of relevance for us today. The Bible tells us that just after the Lord comes, the surface of the earth will remain convoluted and destroyed for 1,000 years. This, brothers and sisters, entire world is going to be a dark valley of dry bones that will one day come back to life for judgment. Can these bones live? Ezekiel was not only a prophet of God, but a priest. And so I, I know you imagine now being a priest where they used to believe that if you touch a dead corpse, you are unclean. And so Ezekiel was taken into vision and he was told to, to pass by the bones. It might have been a, a dog dream come true, but not for Ezekiel because it was considered unclean. And the Bible says that the bones were very dry. I understand that while doing some excavation in an ancient uh, place in England, a team of archaeologists found some very small lily seeds that had been there for thousands of years. And so these archaeologists planted the seeds, and to their amazement, Dr. Joseph, they grew. They grew abundantly. Here you have seeds that were more, more than a thousand years old were able to mushroom and to grow. However, we can't stick a dry bone in water. And expect for it to grow. We can put fertilizer on it, but it will not come back to life. You know, that's how some of us feel sometimes. We, 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 we hear some things growing up that can be discouraging. Some of you were told that you're, you're better off dead. Some of you are told that you're good for nothing. The only thing that come out of you is you're going to have a bunch of children for several different men. Some of you were told that you're going to end up in jail like a no good part. I'm talking about dry bones. And some of us go hearing these things day after day, um, year after year, and sometimes we buy into this. And we feel dry. But I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that according to 1 John 4, verse 12, the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. If you accept the Lord in your life, even if you have ten children with ten different men, you are precious in the eyes of God. Can someone say amen? If you are locked up because you made some dumb mistakes and you surrender your heart to God, you are precious in the eyes of God. Someone say amen today. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are less than. Come on now. But I know some of us feel like we are dying. Some of us feeling, are feeling discouraged. Some of us are feeling lukewarm. Some of us might even be suffering, like I said the other day, from spiritual constipation. Back up! But the Holy Ghost can flush it out, amen? But you must be willing, brothers and sisters, to surrender to God. The Bible says in Luke 15 verse 24 that there was a son who felt that he wanted to go out and experience the world for himself. And when he went up there, the devil beat him up so bad that he ended up working for a man that, that took care of a, a, a pigs. The Bible said he hit rock bottom and he started to look at the, the pigs food and the cravings. The devil is so wicked, he will set you up, he will beat you, he will bruise you up, and put you in the pig pen. This is why sometimes, unfortunately, but thank God there's still mercy, some people have to wait until they lose an eye, 
lose some teeth, lose a leg before they come to the Lord. Oh, Lord, help me. Can these bones live? Then the Lord said to him, in verse 3, he said to him, the Lord asked Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? Now Ezekiel was wise. He gave a good answer. If he was some of us, we would say, Lord, I don't think you're feeling too good today. These bones are totally dry. You know, they said that um, all adults, we have 206 bones. And children are born with 300 at birth. But as they grow, they, some of them fuse together. It goes on to say that our bones uh, show our structure. And our bones can reveal a number of things that are quite interesting. Bones can tell your age. Bones can tell our sex, whether male or female. Bones can reveal various diseases. And it could go, the list goes on and on. In essence, the bones can reveal a biography of our lives. And so Ezekiel said in response, Thou knowest. That's a sweet answer, Dr. Rami. In other words, God, you know what's best. Yeah. And then they ask, why would God ask Ezekiel this question? As if he was trying to trap him. You see, brothers and sisters, God loved to ask questions to get us to think. Yeah. And if some of us would think before we act, we would make less silly mistakes. Yeah. If some of us would think before we go out with certain friends late at night to go to a party, uh, we will know that you might not come back home. If some of us would think, I don't go to a boy's house, he said, come for a private dinner, he just want to watch the movies, and he and only herself is in the house. If he would just think. And so when he asks him this question, Son of man, can these bones live? Jesus, no, that's all power was given to him, amen? Yeah. But he wanted him to think. He wanted him to express confidence and faith. Amen. And if he had said, Lord, no, God would have known that it's time to move on and choose somebody else. Yeah. You see, we can pray as much as we want, but if we don't put our faith into action, it is difficult for God to move. Yeah. And some of us will pray, and ask God for stuff, put the stuff down, and before we leave to go to work or to our business, take it up and put it in the bag, wrap it up, and walk it on our shoulder. Carry it with us. But when we put our problems at the feet of Jesus, it's not always easy. God wants us to leave it there. Can someone say amen? amen. And God wants us to reason with him. Matter of fact, Isaiah 1, we know this, verse 18 says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. The Lord loved when we talk to him. The Lord loved when we converse with him and listen to him as he communicates with us. Amen. Talk with God. Talk with God. If you were the first to a scene of an accident and you saw somebody lying motionless on the ground, you might perhaps so that maybe the person might still be alive and it might be, might be hope. You would probably even do a little CPR to try to revive the person. But if you heading down the street and all you see is a, a stack of bones laying in the road, you would even consider, you would not even consider giving mouth to mouth resuscitation. You wouldn't even consider that. Because you would be saying to yourself that there's no hope. So you can imagine, you can imagine a man was told in the next verse to now preach. Preach. Preach to the bones. What would you think if while you're walking down the street, a man dressed in a gray suit, standing on a box or a podium, preaching to skeletons? What would you think? I know some of you will take up your phone 
and call Sandalins and tell them to come quickly because this man is a menace to society. That is not something that you see happening in our society. A man preaching to bones. But the Lord is a God that specializes in, in, in performing miracles. Our God is a God that specializes in doing things that goes against the grain. God is a God that specializes in, in, in working things out and making things work. And God is, is a specialist in blessing us when things are low. Come on now. And Jesus said to a man to get up and walk after being crippled for 38 years. That's normal. That's not normal. But that's the kind of God we are serving. When God said to the leper, be thou cleansed, and immediately the man was healed. That's the kind of God we are serving. Come on now. When you have a God that says to, to, to a man that was dead for more than three days, and he was stinking, So he said to Ezekiel, 37 verse 5, Behold, I will cause breath to enter in you, and you shall live. Bones are almost always associated with death. Yet scripture tells one story in which bones were a source of life. 2 Kings 13. 2 Kings verse 13. And this is a story that many of us are familiar with. Beginning at verse 20. It's a story about Elijah. Remember that story? And it says that on one particular day, beginning at verse 20, it says here, And Elijah died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was led down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. And I want you to get the picture now. Here you have these friends who are about to bury their loved one, a good friend of many of them, and, and they spot these, these, these uh, ruffians, these warriors, these fighters, the Moabites, and, and they were coming in the direction, riding horses, and they were just uh, up to mischief, and, and, and they were constantly uh, um, ransacking and taking what belongs to the children of Israel, and the friends of this dead man saw them coming, and because of fear, they out of respect, just decided to lay him down on, a, on, on the nearest hole. And it so happened to be that that, that was where Elisha was recently laid. And I want you to get the picture now. Yeah. As soon as his bone connected to Elisha's bones. Come on now. The Bible said that he stood up. Now he not only stood up. Because when he stood up, he sports some of his friends. So I believe he started running next to them too. Trying to find out what's going on. I believe they picked up faith. Because this was a cow. They just threw in the ground. And he was running next to the other sons. Come on, I will turn it up. So that's the kind of God we serve. The Bible goes on to say. Verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Yeah. Don't miss it now. Whenever God asks us to do something, brothers and sisters, sometimes it don't make any sense. Do it. Yeah. Because there's a blessing at the end of that experience. Yeah. 
Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you try things over and over, and all of a sudden God's spirit has come upon you and say, make a phone call. Call this person you haven't spoken to for a number of years. But Lord, where can I call this person and they will give you the number? You see, brothers and sisters, we, some of us like to ask things from God, but don't want to do anything. Lord, send me a man. Send me a wife. You have some things to do. Lord, help my business. Take up the phone. Use your phone in your hand, your smartphone, and make some smart calls. You have a part to play. Elisha had, or Ezekiel had a part to play. By faith, he stood up and he started uh, an elder calling to preach the boots. Dry boots. No life in them. And the Bible said that they were very dry. No hope. No hope. But he started to preach. And he preached his heart out. When you give your all and all for God, the blessings will eventually come. Some of you know what I'm talking about. There were times you wanted to give up. There were times you wanted to throw on the towel. But God somehow reached down and revived your strength, your energy, and you gave it one more push. And the victory came. Can someone say amen? amen. And so he preached. And he preached. And the Bible says that the senior and tenders began to take their places. Next, the skin was put in position. Notice that God was doing things in order. Oh, miss it now. He did not say, let's put all the flesh together. Or let's see if we can squeeze the bones into inside the skin. Uh-uh. We are serving a God that believes in order. Not confusion. First Corinthians. 14 verse 40 says, let all things be done decently and in order. And so I hasten to say, brothers and sisters, the Lord don't like when we fight one another. The Lord don't like when the children of God slander one another's name. Come on now. The Lord don't like when we stir up strife in the church. Because whenever we're doing that, God's spirit step out. Yeah. Wrong place. Yeah. Wrong crowd. Yeah. We have to learn to work together. Yeah. And I always preach it whenever I can. Because when you get to heaven, that same person you couldn't stand to be a neighbor. Yeah. And when you see them, they, they feel so good, they come outside and say, So you better get used. Come on, brothers and sisters. It has to stop. This foolishness has to stop. If someone offends you, pull them aside and deal with it. If someone offends you and they don't want to listen to you, the Bible says the next step is go to an elder, go to a pastor and say, so and so, I have a concern, I want to talk to them, but I need a mediator and talk to them. But some of us quick to take these, these ugly things
You can't, you are no match with the devil, but I am. I created the devil, and I'm going to deal with him and his cause, because all he was doing was stressing my children out for more than 6,000 years. All he was doing was showing up in the Bahamas, causing confusion. All he was doing was causing my children heartache, but I'm going to deal with him. One second all, that no good, low down, cheap state pastor. God is going to do it with him. But you have to hold on. You have to hold on. The Bible said to Ezekiel, preach, brother, preach, preach. And Ezekiel preached, and then stuff start to come together. Finally, Dr. Kerry. The Bible said that the, the, the body stood straight, but there was no life in them. Hello, hello. No life. And there's some people that comes to church. Boy, they look good. They, they're, they're wearing good suits. Their hair is in place. They just put on, what type of the talk wigs now? Come on, I have my
want to get that nice little kink out and you do a little What you have to hold on to God, amen? 